Allah loves you and Allah wants to hear your voice. And this is a quality that is dead. Or if it's not dead, it's very little. And really, if you look at your life, ask yourself, just how much do I repent towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the authentic hadith, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stretches his hand during the day so that the sinners of the night can repent. And then Allah the Almighty stretches his hand during the night so that the sinners of the day can repent. And Allah will continue to stretch his hand during the day and the night till the sun rises from the west, meaning the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers, the king, the master, the creator, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need anyone. Allah doesn't need anyone. Don't ever think brother in your life that your charity or your salah or your little tasbih or your little, this does not increase Allah's greatness. This does not make Allah better in any way, shape or form. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith al-Qudsi, He says, Ya ibadi, Allah is calling out. He says, Oh my slaves, not the Muslims, anyone and everyone. Oh my slaves, Ya ibadi, law awwalakum wa akhirakum. If the first of you till the last of you, meaning from the first human being till the last human being, if all of you, human and jinn, if you were all together collectively and worship me and worship me and worship me and and worship me until you all come like the best heart amongst you. This does not increase my greatness. It does not increase Allah's greatness. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with his sahaba. He says to them, you know, I see what you don't see and I hear what you don't hear. He says to them, verily the heavens have squeaked. The heavens, the sky, the heavens have squeaked. You know, when you put a lot of weight on something, it makes that squeaking sound. There's a lot of weight, there's a lot of pressure on it. He says, the heavens have squeaked. He says, for by Allah, there isn't room for four fingers, except there is an angel in prostration towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does Allah need me? Yet this Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the authentic hadith, that Allah is happier. Allah is so happy when you, my brother, when you, my sister, when you make tawbah towards Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the authentic hadith, imagine, look at the example he gives sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, imagine there's someone in the desert and he's riding on his camel and he has all of his provisions on the camel. And then the man takes some rest and then all of a sudden he loses his camel. What hardship would this man be going through? Everything, my food, my water, my transportation is on the camel and I lose the camel. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the authentic hadith, then imagine this man was to take some rest, then all of a sudden he was to see his camel again. How happy would you become? How happy would you be? He says, Allah is happier than this man. When you make tawbah to him, Allahu Akbar. Ya Allah, you don't need me. Ya Allah, I'm nothing. Yet you are this happy when I make tawbah? Yes, my brother. Yes, my sister. Allah wants to hear your voice. Humble yourself before Allah. Humble. Because it shows that you're a slave and he's your master. Because it, it distinguishes any pride that's in the heart. Anything. How much does Allah love us? Allah says, Oh my slave, if you come to me with an earth load of sin, but you don't associate partners with me, I will come to you with an earth load of forgiveness. Allahu Akbar. This Allah who says, do what you want. If you repent, I will forgive. My brother, who in the world has so much love? Ya Allah, you don't need me. Ya Allah, I'm less than zero. You are the king of all kings. You are the master. You are the one who the billions and billions and billions and billions of angels are in prostration day and night. They never disobey you. Never, never, ever do they ever disobey you. Yet you're happy when this sinner says, Ya Allah, forgive me. And he said in another hadith, I think it's a weak narration. It says that there's a celebration in the heavens because you, my brother, made tawbah towards Allah. You know that little astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, forgive me. What love? There's no stronger bond between a mother and her child. Is there anyone in here that could possibly argue the point? Is there a stronger bond? In fact, even Allah uses the example of the mother and the breastfeeding child. He says, this, there's no closer bond. This mother who for years, and even your mother, if you push the right buttons, she'll disown you. Your father who took honor and pride in knowing that I have a son or in knowing that I have a daughter, he took honor and pride and he worked day and night to provide us with, with a good, comfortable life. Even him, if you push the right buttons, he'll disown you. Your boss who you've been working for for 10 years, 20 years, even he has a procedure at work that if you break these rules, you're fired, you're gone, you're finished. 
Your best friend, your buddy, your pal, my brother, my kawi, my whatever he is. Years on the streets, years together. We spend time in the cell together. He's my silly. Whatever he is, if you push the right buttons with him, even he's going to disown you. But Allah the Almighty, who doesn't need any of us collectively, Allah the Almighty says, Oh my slave, if you were to sin against me, harm me, neglect me for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, then one time in your life, only once in your life, you decided that I want to make tawbah and you said, Ya Rabb, Allah says, Ya Abdi, what do you want? And he said, Ya Allah, forgive me. He says, My slave, I have forgiven all your sins. Is this not a Rabb who is worthy of worship? Does this Allah not, is, is he not worthy of being praised day and night? You don't have to speak to any sheikh, nothing whatsoever. Don't sign any paperwork. You don't even need to be in wudu. You don't even need to be in a particular place or at a particular time. Nothing whatsoever. Anytime something enters the heart, you say, Ya Rabb. Allah says, Ya Abdi Naam. Naam, what do you want? And Allah isn't like the human being. Allah, the more you ask, the happier. Allah, the bigger the ask, the bigger the wish, the happier he is. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, every single human being is a sinner. Everyone, sheikh, mufti, whatever he is, he's a sinner. He says, and the best of sinners are those who make tawbah towards Allah. In fact, Allah says, if this ummah was to stop sinning, Allah would replace it with an ummah that sins and then makes tawbah. Is this Rabb not worthy of worship? This is Allah, my brothers. This is Allah. And Allah wants to hear your voice. Humble yourself before him. Do it in the dark. Do it on your own. Do it in public. In wudu, out wudu, doesn't matter. Turn to Allah. Allah wants to hear your voice. Allah already knows what you do in secret, in the dark is, and Allah already knows it anyway. But Allah wants to hear your voice. Allah wants to see you humble yourself before him. And that's why my brother, when you raise your hands and you say, Ya Rabb, Oh Allah, Allah, if you don't forgive me, who's going to forgive me? Allah, if you don't have mercy upon me, who's going to have mercy upon me? Who? Allah, I knock on your door. If you don't open the door, then who's going to open the door? Who? Brother and sister, if you had the money of the world, who can forgive your sins other than Allah? Who? No one except him. You know, there's always a brother in the crowd. There is always a brother in the crowd that says, brother, not me, man. You don't know my past. You don't know the places I've been and you don't know the things I've done. There's always, always that brother. My brother's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us in the authentic hadith in Bukhari, he tells us of a man who killed 99 people. How many did he kill? 99. So my brother, you, your past, the past of the brother sitting next to you. In fact, every single person sitting in this room and their past collectively, we don't even come to a quarter of this man. He killed 99 people. Authentic hadith in Bukhari. Open up Riyadh Salihin, chapter 2, repentance. Look at it there. So after 99 people, something entered his heart and he wanted to make tawbah. So he asks the people, you know, he says to him, where can I go? I want to make tawbah. So the people said to him, look, there's this guy who's a abid. He worships Allah day and night. If there's anyone you're going to ask, go and ask him. So the man goes to him and says to him, brother, I've killed 99 people and I want to make tawbah. Can Allah forgive me? So this abid, and just to side point, my brothers, this is the danger when you seek knowledge from someone who looks religious. But bro, he's in the masjid every day, bro. This guy's pumped. I asked him and he said, it's all right. We all do this. Brother, his beard's like that. Wallah, his beard's like that. And he's always in the masjid. I asked him and he said, it's all right. So he asks the abid, this guy's worshipped Allah day and night. This guy's never seen anything. This guy's in worship day and night. So when he hears 99 people, the guy freaks out. He can't comprehend killing one man, let alone 99. He says to him, Allah can never forgive you. So the man goes, well, since Allah's not going to forgive me. So he kills him as well. But he polished him off because he didn't like his fatwa. It shows you the ruthlessness of this man. He killed a abid, not someone who, who offended him or someone who, you know, eyeballed him or someone who opposed him out on the streets. He disrespected, no, no, not this guy's a worshiper, bro. But because he didn't like his fatwa, he killed him and made him a hundred. Authentic hadith, Bukhari, huh? He says, but Rasulullah says, but there was something in his heart. He really wanted to turn back towards Allah. So he asked, and then the people said to him, look, don't hang around here, otherwise you kill us all. There's an area, there's a scholar there. Go and speak to him. It's a long story, I'll cut it short. He goes to the scholar, he says to him, I've killed a hundred, can Allah forgive me? Now look at the difference between when you ask, you know, the guy in the mosque, you know, the guy with the big beard, when you ask him and you ask Alim, he says to the man, and who can stand between you and Tawbah? Who? Now we're talking. The man's thinking, now we're talking. I like this thing. 
He says to him, for you to make Tawbah, you got to leave this environment. It's a very bad environment and the people, they're not helping you in doing good. There is a town, there is an area, go there, there are good people. These people will help you worship Allah and they will help you pull up and change. So the man was sincere. He packs his stuff and heads off to the town. On the way, death meets him, he dies. So the angels of forgiveness come down and the angels of punishment come down. And there's an argument. The angels of mercy said, but he made Tawbah. The angels of punishment said, no, 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 he killed a hundred people and he didn't complete his Tawbah, he was on the way. So Allah sends down a third to be a judge between them. The angel said, measure the distance. If he is closer to the town of sin, then let the angels of punishment take him. But if he is closer to the town of forgiveness, then let the angels of mercy take him. So they measured the earth and unfortunately for him, he was closer to the town of sin. Authentic hadith in Bukhari. Allah ordered the earth to change its dimensions and made him one hand span closer to the town of piety. 100 people. But he was sincere. Allah gave him this. I gave the same khutbah. Someone came up to me after. He said to me, bro, my 14 year old son has a big smile on his face. I said to him, why? He said, because now he thinks he can go do whatever he wants and Allah's going to forgive him. So I said tomorrow, like, and I'll, I'll, I'll make this a note towards the end of my khutbah. Brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and forgiveness is not a free ticket for you to go out there and sin. Don't miss understand the khutbah. Allah's mercy is for the one who wants it. Allah's mercy is for the one who does wrong and then he acknowledges his wrong and then he wants to turn to Allah, then Allah forgives him, yes. But this does not mean in any way, shape or form that this is a golden ticket for you and I to get out onto the streets and run amok and then say, you know what? I'll repent when I'm older. You're planning and plotting against Allah. You think Allah doesn't know what's in your heart, brother? Sister, do you think Allah doesn't know what's in your heart? What makes you think that you will make that tawbah, that you will repent before death comes to you? It's like Pharaoh. Allah mentions him in the Quran, Pharaoh, the biggest tyrant. Then when death came to him and he was drowning, he said, Oh, I believe in the Lord of the Israelites. Allah says, now you've acknowledged, now you've come. And Allah took him. Allah did not accept this tawbah. So don't be of the foolish, my brother and sister. Make tawbah towards Allah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and let Allah hear your voice. Allah wants to hear your voice. No matter how many times of the day, no matter what you ask for, Allah is happy to hear it. So inshallah, every single one of us should make this a quality every single day that we make tawbah towards Allah. Istighfar can change your life.